Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my Marshall Motion here on Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Um, so again, we'll be kind of curtailing our originally three-part series into two. Um, we'll be meeting on Mondays at 3 o'clock and on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock as well. And um, today, we'll be getting a bit more into our core foundations. And so with that said, how the grounds also correlates to us in the standing position because in effect we are still connected with the earth. Okay. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and start in the seated position here. And the end stays out. So the top of our feet are on the mat. And the spine is in alignment. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my knee is just relaxed and the front palms facing up. One overlap with the other. Go ahead and close our eyes so we're slightly tilted forward, chin down to the chest ever so slightly. Just lifting the spine to allow air to come in through the lungs and then expand the rib cage. Okay, mindful of how I breathe in as well, allowing air into my nose. My posture is as far as possible, spinning my lungs, my neck cage, and next to my mouth. Relax my facial muscles, relax the shoulders a bit, my jaw, my brow. In the breathe into the upper register of it. On the air, come through my chest, expand the chest, my upper rib cage. And inhaling through the nose, exhaling the mouth. Deepen the breath. Give it a slight pause at the top and bottom of each breath. Um, any disturbances, distractions, anything that enters in our head. Accept that for what it is and turn it back to our breath. Pausing the controlled exhalation. Spelling the air completely from the lungs. Pause. Inhale again with the nose. We're going to regulate the breathing just a bit. Breathing naturally, normally. Then I'm kind of grounding in the tops of my feet. Here I open my eyes. So in my surroundings visually. I'm gonna walk myself forward, bringing my hips. Off of my heels, we would come into a tabletop position. Okay, bring my hand just beneath my shoulders, my hips just above my knees. We will begin a cat cow. So, again, getting into our breathing, and exhaling like that, inhaling for my cow. And indicated as such new shapes that our bodies are making. Head goes up, belly goes down for my cow. Neck back goes up towards the sky, spilling the air out of my lungs for exhalation. Simultaneously, I'm grounding in through the palms, all five fingers of each hand. So, really straightening my fingers and 
keeping even space between them. Not too wide. Just enough to give myself a good base in my hands. Knees, feet, next to the ground. I'm trying my best to put my shins at the top of my feet to the ground as I can. Find that fluidity in the spine. Here, I'm going to walk my fingers forward as I sit my wrist back, slightly wider my knees, back of my child's face. Walking fingers forward, just allowing the hips to weigh back and elongating the spine, increasing the capacity for air to flow in and out of the lungs. And rest in between the arms. Continue to walk my fingers forward. I can find that position. Just keep me in that elongated position. Coming off my heels and my palms, even. Same in my fingertips. So I keep that elongation in the spine. Let's take a few more breaths here. Excellent. Now from here, I'm going to ground into the balls, to the base of my hands, fully into my palms. Then I'm going to dive downward and forward through a chaturanga to an up dog. So from here, still pressing through the tops of my feet. Elbows just barely touching the ground as I glide by. Still pressing the tops of feet to the mat. Elbows begin to come up. I press the tops of my feet into the ground, shoulders back, gaze forward, my up dog. Keep my legs straight as I can, arms straight, eyes and my elbows facing forward. Next, now from here, I push into my down dog. Here, staying on the tips of my toes as best I can if I feel any pressure at all. I flip them over. One, two, to the bottom of my foot, on the balls of my feet. Head stays in between my arms as my heels lower. I create a slight bend in my knee. Begin to pedal up feet, one heel up and down at a time, alternating left and right. Keeping my back straight in line with my arms. Now from here, I'm going to lower my knees down towards the ground. Flip the toss of my feet and go back to that child's pose. Again, I can bring my knees wide. Elongating the spine again. Drop my hips back and walk my fingers forward. Once I feel that lifting the spine, my ribs are open, allowing air to come into the lungs, and the spine the Permanent position, a semi-permanent position for my fingers to stay. As my hips drop back. Excellent. And then now from here, I'm going to dive through again, reach out around it to my up dog. Here this time, I'm trying to keep my weight off of my elbows. As I dive through, keep my arms in tight with my body. Pressing with the tops of my feet. Shaking my legs, get your off the ground, hips down, shoulders back, again allowing gravity and my breathing to work the stretch. Again, pushing back the down dog. Put the one foot at a time. One and two. We can do both if you feel. Lowering my heels as well as bending my knees. My head in between my arms, spine in alignment, and really engaging my lats as well. So my armpits bring them in towards one another, towards my ears. Maybe the set of those feet. 
Peel up, peel down. And same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and throw the knees back down to the ground. Top of the feet back to the mat. Again, walk the fingers forward, draw the hips back. For our child's pose, bring the knees slightly wider. Drop the chest in between the thighs. Then walk those fingers forward to the long the spine. One more breath. And again, dive through. Facing really in my knees. Elbows just barely touching the ground this time. Press into the top of my feet as I dive through. From Chaturanga. Dude, tough dog. Shoulders back, my gaze is forward, my hips are down towards the ground. Again, pressing the feet into the ground. Nice and from here. Push it back again. Down dog. Lift the feet one, two, two balls to my feet. Bending both legs one at a time. Spine lining with my arms. And in between my arms. From here, but then both legs. My gaze is now forward, about 45 degrees down towards the ground, just ahead of my hands as I jump and float into my deep squat. One, two, and watch first, and here we go. So, here's really all I'm looking for is just to make sure that I land safely. Okay, so now we'll all do it together. Those are a bit more advanced. We have a little bit of float, normally with the arm balance as well. Keeping safety is number one. Gaze forward. One, two, and down. Pressing my palms together. My spine is in an upright position. I'm going to open up the adductors. Really getting my elbows in between my thigh. Posture stays upright. Three more breaths into the nose. Through to the base and back of the lungs. Really expanding even through our contracted position. Now from here, what I'm going to do is push away. This land is seated on my sit bones. So I push away and just lower my hips down towards the ground. Here. From here, I extend my legs forward. I bring my palms down to the ground. Nice. Up here, what I'm going to raise up, arms straight up, palms facing each other. Let's go into our plow position. So here, I'm going to raise my legs, keeping both my feet together and point it. So I raise my legs, inhale, and I raise my hips, legs are straight. Exhale as my legs lower down towards my skull. Here, I'm keeping no pressure on my neck, mainly on the fleshy part of my shoulders. Up here, I'm going to bring one foot behind one knee. Doesn't matter which one. And I'm rolling and rising through my combat base. My hands come to my face. For protection, as I roll forward. And I'm stretching the Achilles on my knee foot, top of my foot on my base foot. And again, from here, I push away. And now I'm towards the ground. Lower down onto my sit bone. One, extend the leg, arms come back again. Let's come back to our plow. Inhale up and exhale. As the legs lower, we go for a pointed foot or demi point. Let's keep the leg straight, no pressure on the neck. And then we switch, opposite foot, 
kind of opposite knee. Slide into my lead leg, so I bring my hands towards my face to rise up. Combat face again. Okay, or keeping my lead heel on the ground for a full stretch, as well as my top leg planted to the ground for a stretch as well. I push away, lower it down on one glute, extend the legs, again, my arms come back, palms face each other, and back to plow. Knees internally, legs internally rotated, feet together, and heel rise. As my hips rise up, then my legs lower. Exhale. Thanks. Lift from here, bringing one foot behind one knee. From here, go back into that combat base. Again, further getting the fifth wall to stretch, bring it back of the leg, and the top of the leg on the opposite foot. Back down we go, push away, rolling down the knees, extending both legs, arms go back again. Inhale, rise. As my hips rise, my legs lower, I exhale. And switch, opposite foot, my opposite knee. As I roll forward, Engaging my core rather than losing using momentum. I push back. Lower. Extend. And come back. Look. Now from here, I raise both legs back to that top position. And lower. Here, I'm going to use both legs with momentum, swing both legs and draw my heels in towards my sit bones and rise up onto both feet. And so, a bit of momentum, I swing. And here is where both feet from just the, my sit bones that I come into a rise position. Okay, so a bit of momentum. Okay. If we feel like we're can't quite make it right, just go ahead and push back down, lower them down the sit bones. Extend both legs. Again, we're using momentum, bringing the feet just a little wider apart. The pockets width maybe slightly wider. Coming forward back into that deep squat. Okay, now we'll try together. Push away. Down, extending the legs, arms back. Again, as I raise my legs back into plow, I'm using the momentum of my legs drawing forward, even pushing off the ground with my hands. One, two, and three. Now, face you here, we rise from that deep squat again, going into a sumo squat. So here I'm going to raise my hips up to about the same height as my knees. Here my feet begin to widen. Thighs parallel to the ground, hands from the heart, down to my right side, stretching my left leg. Toes are up, my foot is flexed. Drawing my base legs heel towards my butt. And we switch to the opposite side. Trying our best to not use hands and assistance, but if we need to, we go ahead and bring the hands along the ground to walk our way to the other side. Again, my foot is flexed. Toes are facing straight up. Opposite heel off the ground. Nice. Now we'll switch to the other side. Again, opposite heel is off the ground. Here I'm going to bring my inner foot to the ground, keeping my posture as upright as I can, turning my hip towards the front of me, foot is still flexed. And again, we switch, no hands. Shifting my weight from one leg to the other, flexing the foot and internally rotating at thigh, keeping my posture. 
posture as far as I can. Nice. Let me switch to the other side. Here, I'm going to keep my heel on the ground this time. So here I'm going to reach my arms forward, just so you can see here, right? Going to the side lunge. This time I'm going to put the toes up towards the sky again. Me reaching forward keeps me from falling backwards onto my sit bones. Nice, I'm still keeping this heel connected to the ground, facing that same side leg. And I switch. Okay. More so lowering than shifting more, right? Raising the heel, I'm gonna keep the heel down in this case. Toes are up, toes flex. Need the assistance of the hands. If you're bringing it behind, just play with your balance as you go along. Okay, and let's go ahead and switch to the other side. Again, heel stays on the ground with this flex, but again, this time turning. Inner foot, internally rotating back. Just give you a bit of a side view here. You know, that heel drives me lean forward just a bit so I don't fall backwards. And switch it. Again, my foot is flexing my length and leg. My heel is down on my base leg. Turn the inner foot down towards the ground. Reach forward with my arms. Just keep myself a bit more upright, not falling backwards. And again, switching to the right side. Facing my front view to you this, this time. Go into my lunge. My head is up. Down. Of course, as my left leg lifts more, keep my knee off the ground, but I'm really drawing that same side hip down towards the ground rather than the knee. Now, here I raise my right hand off the ground. Extend up, pointing straight up, looking up. Let's twist the body with an exhalation. <laughs> Shoulders stack on top of one another. And I switch. Draw that hand back to where it was. I pivot to my left, rotating the feet, walking my hands. Again, making sure that there's lateral space between my feet. Head is up, my knees are down. Really draw it into the hip more so than the knee itself. Okay, this time my left hand leaves the ground. I turn and twist my body, it's point straight up towards the sky. Shoulders stack on top of one another. Two more breaths. Last breath, twisting in the hips. Spelling air for the lungs. And here I come back down. Yeah, walk my hands to the center. And just for count of three. Okay, it's just as, uh, as we feel, oh, feel fit. Okay, it's a bit more of a level three move depending on our flexibility. I want to walk my hands slightly ahead of my shoulders. Here I dive through. Not too different than we did before, only now my legs are in a split position. To the chest, I dive through. For an up dog. Here I push back, drawing my chin back to my chest. Going for a little bit more stretch in my adductors and my groin. Once that's too much strain, I dive out again. Again, my hands are slightly ahead of my shoulders to make sure there isn't too much stress on them as I dive through my last one. Elbows pointing back, hugging my side as I rise back up. I push my hips back to the same level as my feet. Here I'm going to tip my palms, just heel toe myself to stay in position. Heel toe, bend the knees, rotate the heel, rotate the ball, rotate the heel, rotate the ball. To my feet, come two. Show the hips with the heart. Lift the arms and head hang heavy. 
it just rides. And it's really heavy. Posterior tilt my hip, rotating, stacking my spine to an upright position, one vertebrae at a time from the base to the top. I'll go down on my knees and stay standing just so you can see gradual positioning in my body. Head rises last. I bring the arm straight up and back, palms facing. Keeping my gaze straight ahead of me, my head between my arms. And flex the forearms. Exhale and float hands to the side. Okay, let's go ahead and grab a water break. We'll be back in 30 seconds. For this part, we're going to move our yoga mats out of the way. We'll be using them again to keep candy on the own standby. Okay, so for yourselves, you can go ahead and angle your camera to see yourself better. I'll do the same to see you see me. Right. So show which direction my feet are going to be pointing. Pretty much I'm going which direction my knee is pointing. Okay. So from here, we are going to go ahead and go for back kicks as well as front kicks. But here, noticing where my heel is pointing is the direction in which my energy is going, okay? So starting with my profile to you, I'm raising my knee up to my chest and I'm kicking backwards. As I kick backwards, notice that's the same direction in which my plant foot is pointing. Keep my arms to my side, I raise my knee into my chest and I Lean forward while extending backwards. As I extend backwards, a small opening of my hips. So my hips are not facing you. My heel and toe are facing east and west. And as I thrust, I lean off to the side. Heel and toe facing east west. Put that knee back into my chest and then back down to the ground to neutral feet. Okay. You do the same. Raise the knee into the chest. Extend backwards as you lean forward. I want to look back to where I'm kicking as well, keeping my heel and toe east west. We're going to keep the same movement, but in conjunction with our breathing. Inhale, raise up. So my breath, very breath is drawing my foot up and my knee into my chest. Exhale, extend. Inhale, draw back, and exhale, lower. Keep the same movement, very methodical, just peace movement. I really want for much speed at all, but what I'm going for is a little bit more extension with each repetition. Keep my hands to my, my hands close to my head, my arms close to my body. Extend backwards. Draw my knee back in and lower me down. Turn. Aim. Look in the direction in which I'm pointing. I draw it back in. Lower. Lower knee up. Inhale. Extend backwards. Exhale. And back in. Knee come back into my chest. Back to that internal rotation as I lower down exhalation. Just a few more. Keep 
keep in mind that propulsion is our exhalation each time as well. Really opening the hips, looking back to where we're being. Here we're going to go ahead and open the hips just a bit more with our upper body. The feet slightly wider than hips width apart. We're going for our punches. A similar thrusting motion. I'm going to use the entire length of my limbs to come forward to make impact at a certain point. So here, punching straight across my body. And my feet slightly wider than hips width apart. Turn about 45 degrees that turn. Entire body sideways, punching sideways, east west. Raising my heel. Each time I throw a punch, I'm still, of course, grounding in to the ground each time I throw as well. Okay, pointing down towards the feet. Turning, heel facing the opposite direction, which I'm punching. Open up the lungs, lift that exhalation, twist in the spine and in the hips to drive the energy from the ground through this. Keep in mind still, slight bend in the arm as I extend forward, creating impact, but also being mindful of my protection. Hands to my head and arm to my body, opposite side. And time. Now, what we're going to do is get ourselves into a bit more defensive position, okay? A bit more martial position, should I say? Because martial would be being mindful of not just defense, but offense as well, okay? And they can both interchangeable. So, I'm staggered. My stance, my left foot is forward, pointing straight ahead. My back moves at a 45 degree angle, so my feet go against the clock and the feet bow to the clock. Okay, if I were left handed, bring my left foot back to power. In that case, my feet would look like so they're two o'clock as if they were, they were against the clock. Okay, go into my strong position. I have a 45 degree angle between both feet as well. So now, when I throw my punches, Raising my right heel as I throw my right, and then lowering that same heel as I throw my left. Now, something you may notice as we look through the screen, as I throw these punches, my head naturally twists off the center line each time I throw. Chin is drawn a little bit towards my chest, that's the point where I'm straining. Just lowering the head, keeping protection, not just the brain, but the heart as well. Shoulders slightly rounded forward. And time. Now we're going to switch to our less powerful position. So if you're in a two o'clock stance, we're going to switch to our 10 o'clock stance. My back knee facing out 45 degrees as well as my toes, my lead foot facing straight ahead. Okay? So, again, my jab and my cross. My jab is going to lean in. When I throw my cross in order to get rotation and thrust forward, I draw that back heel off the ground, thus bringing my hips and shoulders to a neutral position. Heel down, up, heel down. And also, as you keep receiving along, don't no stop. We are not just doing one movement and another. They're both together. As I raise my heel, I'm throwing my punch forward. As I lower my heel, I'm throwing the other one. 
reach forward. So my shoulders are turning with my hips. And time, switch it again. Back into our strong stance. This time throwing two same punches. And this time I'm gonna throw my same side kick. Now this kick, my front kick, which is a bus kick, but making sure that the ball of my foot is where the intended target is going to hit me, okay? So, jab my cross, left, right, right arm kind of bounces, right kick. Now from here, what I'm doing, right, not just to forward here, but I'm leaning back, okay, the opposite, or back kick. But I, this time, I want to raise my heel off the ground. So, you can't see my heel now, but as I keep forward, I'm raising my heel off the ground just to get a bit more propulsion forward. Okay, it's a point jack cross. Okay, finding my balance as I go along. That's where the main part of my attention is going to go to, right? My balance while directing my energy forward. Jack cross. And I draw it right back in. Okay. Try my best to keep balance and bring myself back down to the ground in a controlled fashion. Go a little bit faster. Get my toes to flex backwards. But my foot is pointed to make sure that I'm punching with the bottom of my foot. It comes back, foot comes back. Notice it doesn't compromise my protection on my left side. Arms still to my body, hands still to my head. And switching again this time. Okay, so. Box stance, okay, or two box stance. We only start in our softball. So I jab my cross again this time, my weaker hand. I raise my heel to the ground as I raise my leg up. I go for that front kicking with control, bringing my foot back to that same position. Jab cross. Still making sure to raise the heel each time I throw. Still flexing the foot, but flexing only with any point of fashion, not completely flexing the foot. Okay? Oops, I can't do. In this case, I'm trying to aim just ball the foot. A lot more attention emphasis on going out with power and coming back with control. And time. Okay, now from here we're going to go Transition from our standing position to our ground position via our sprawl. Okay, so here go down to a low squat, hands come down to the ground. I kick back to both feet, and again, getting that same drive from the hips as I did before to my low squat, drawing my hips down and then up to keep the momentum. Come back to my standing position. Okay, squat. Hands down, kick back, and use the momentum to come right back up into that position. Okay, 10 in a row, starting now. I'll go slow just so you can see the mechanics behind it. My posture is upright as possible, using my legs, not much lower. 
but to lift. My posture's upright again as I rise. Back down. Use my exhalation to come back to my standing position. Lower down. Feet come wide on the hips of the part. Stand up. Come down to my plank. My feet come hips to the part. And back to slightly wider hips to the part. And at 10, is time. Hands going to grab support with the back in in 30 seconds. Okay. The heel will be coming back down towards the ground. And here, we pull our yoga mats back out. And now we're going back into rolling into our combat base here. Okay, but this time. We're going to do an outcoming into a prone position. Okay, so we're a little bit more engaged in our core this time and using less momentum. So, here, bringing one foot behind one knee, as we did from our plow position, right? We've got to have the momentum of our legs rolling, rocking forward, right? And swinging through one foot behind one knee. But in this case, I'm already going to be in a seated position. I'm just switching my feet each time. One foot behind one knee, posting on one foot. And the other leg is down. Switch. Pretty much all I'm doing is shifting my weight from one side to the other. Roll it over my shin. Now using the width of my knee, drawing down towards the ground, my hips driving forward, coming to a full standing position. Okay? So here, switch. 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 Now here. Really basic to my legs. I rise up using my lead leg, bringing my feet to neutral. Same foot, move back down, top of the foot, knee. Again, give a lot of emphasis on being the ground with control. I push away. But this time I don't come all the way down with my legs, just back down to my hips. I switch from one combat base to another. My knee is close to my head. Switch. Standing. Cool. Same foot comes back down. This is just one minute. Switch. Same foot comes back down. Knee down. Roll back. No impact on the ground. Keep that same momentum to go through. I really try to drive the hips forward each time. And time. So, in the same position here, I want to go back down. Okay, this time I draw my hips all the way down towards the ground. I push away. And I'm going to draw my heels towards my butt. We were coming for our bridge. Okay, so a basic bridge from a grounded position. I need to keep my legs in a powerful position. Okay, so anything that would happen to me on top of me, I have my legs to drive my hips into the sky. Okay, so as I bridge, I turn onto my opposite shoulder and I reach the opposite foot. Hips back down, bridge, reach. And I draw my hips back down towards my heels. 
just try to make sure my shirt doesn't slide backwards as I drive up with my legs. So here I exit. Inhales, I lower. Exhale up. Keep me keeping my heels base on the ground. Both look flat to the mat. Hands come back to my head, arms back to my body. And time. Now, what we're doing is we're coming to an upright position. Uh, so I'm going to use the yoga mats. Okay, so we'll remove the yoga mats for now. I want to introduce the bridge again and from the bridge moving into the tabletop position. Okay, so move the yoga mats for now. Again, we'll be coming back to them. So now this bridge, my hips are off the ground. Toes pointing one direction ahead of me, my fingers facing straight behind me. Now, I'm going to raise my hips, okay, and really draw my knee into my chest as I raise my hand off the ground. Okay, so from here, I raise up. From here, I draw my left hand off the ground. Same bridge. This time, three point face, upright. Let's move this. Start with a few of these. Get a bit more opening in the hips. This time, I'm based on my hand, not my shoulder. Exhale, reach. Here, I'm facing my palms down. As I raise my hips up, drawing the bear in as I lower my hips down. Inhale, exhale up. And stay in base in both feet. Excellent. Now from here, going to do is bring my right foot to where my left hand is and vice versa. Okay, so from here I return, raise left hand, right foot, and I pivot, turn here into my tabletop position. Now here, I'm raising just my left hand, and I'll face my group off view and my right foot. Same time. Right hand, left foot, same time. We'll just do a few more beats. Again, I'm falling into my breath for 30 seconds. So I draw my foot and my hand off of the ground with my inhalation and back down with an exhalation. Raising my foot and my hand to about the same height, and my knee is off the ground. 10 seconds. And I hit the swimming belt, took the water, I'm going to return back to a similar position back here in 30 seconds. Okay, so our yoga mat is still out of the way for now. Now, I want to return back to our tabletop position. 
I'm sorry, uh, into our bridge position. This time, I'm bringing my hands a little bit closer to one another, so I'll place them back towards you. Both hands a bit closer to one another here, okay? So this may depend on your shoulder range, of course. But what it really is to do is to get myself a bit more centered in my hands and have a bit of a tripod base here, okay? So as I raise up my hand again, so I raise my left hand up and across my body into that bridge, a lot of space between my feet and my hand. From here, I'm going to bring my same side leg up as well. So, I'm going to throw my left knee into my chest. So, the only thing I'm based on here is my right hand and my right foot. Throw my knee into my chest. If I rotate my, left, my right foot, begin to bring that hand close to the other. As I straighten my base leg, as I contain that rotation, I bend it again, tucking my left knee into my chest and come back to a neutral stance with the other foot. So here I'm back in the triangulated base here. And so I pulse to my center, then I go the opposite direction. I raise my hips up for a bridge. Right palm faces down. I raise my right knee up into my chest, straight in my base leg, placing my hand. I begin to bend that leg, so I raise the other hand, one my knee into my chest as I come through to my feet to a neutral position. Facing my profile this time. Again, my hands are somewhat close together. Fingers facing back, toes facing forward, bridge up. Up goes the corresponding leg, straightening my legs as I pivot. As I draw the hand down to the ground, that pivot further, raising the other hand, my leg bends. Back the opposite direction. Exhale. Put knee to the chest, hand down to the ground, and kicking through to my feet to a neutral position. Less than a minute. Up, 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 up. up. I lighten on the same side leg, throw that knee into my chest, straighten the leg, place the hand, bend the leg. And coming through. Just a few more. Showing my hands, these just beneath my shoulder. And tie. Okay. Let's go ahead and come back into a standing position, grab a quick support if you need. Again, we're going to position our camera to an upright standing position. Okay. So now we're putting these different combinations together now, right? And we also have an opportunity to just open the limbs up a bit more, let the gas out. So here I'm putting my stance, I jab my cross. One, two, with my front kick, with my rear leg, I switch positions. And again, jab, cross from the reverse this time, front kick, switch, jab, cross, switch, jab, cross, lead, rear, rear, still raising that base heel off the ground each time I throw that kick, switch, switch, jab, cross, 
kick, arm comes down, as the leg comes up, switch. Let's add a little bit of speed to it as well, but not compromising our control. Gastro, so raise that heel off the ground. Switch. And last one. And tie. Okay. Now, grab a quick support if you need. So we're going to come back down towards the ground. You can position your cameras downward. Yoga mats back down. Let's be closed. Not too differently than you. Okay, so let's have a bit to our mats. Big Cesar. We have to open it the top to the piece of the ground. Try to get shin deep down towards the ground. And again. Just grounding in, kind of hips towards the feet, feet into the ground. Okay. Not here, just gonna walk my fingers forward and keep my hips back, widen the knees, far child's pose. Keep the lungs open, the lungs. More capacity for air to reach each long sack. And not forcing too much, just allowing the air to naturally flow in the expanding of it reach to allow more capacity for the lungs. Okay, so I dive through to our up dog. Press the top to the piece of the mat still. Shoulders back, looking forward, hips down towards the ground, my thighs up. Okay, we push back down dog. One foot, two feet, lower the heels. Heel up, heel down. Yeah, straight, the mind is fine. Show some new Achilles and the calves as we go. Sit here, I lower my knees back down towards the mat, pointing my feet, and turning back to Cesar. I'm going to rest my hands in the lap. Hand in hand. Up. And extending the lungs via raising my spine up towards the sky. So there's a strong attachment to my head. And then pulling my spine up into the sky. I'm still running my hips down towards my heels. Press the tops of my feet into the earth. This allowing. That connectedness to resonate. All throughout. Relax the jaw, relax the brow. Be present through our breath. Disturbances. Distract us from this present moment and observe them, acknowledge them for they are. Let them go. Continue to find that connectedness, groundedness, throughout the body, mind, and 
Holy Spirit. Thank you again for joining us for Marshall Motion Bear Mind Movements. We'll see you again next Monday at 3 o'clock. Enjoy your week. Thank you.